from the Far East to Western Europe, from Siberia to Hindustan. Many centuries ago, the nomadic civilization stretched for tens of thousands of kilometers. Today, the descendants of ancient nomadic tribes have become independent nations, yet they have preserved their nomadic survival culture. In what form nomadic traditions are still alive at present? Watch the FM Sports to learn all about that and much more. Game of the Brave Grueling Training Kokpa, Pride of the Nation Every nation has their own traditional folk games which demonstrates the culture, mentality, social aspects and customs of the people. Canadians love hockey, Europeans have football, and we, the descendants of the nomads, have Kokpa. The ancient equestrian game Kokpa, known from the times of Zoroastrianism, is a test of endurance and strength for its players. Kokpa is played by athletic adult men. However, some of the players can be young. If a player is a great horse rider and is capable of lifting a gold carcass off the ground with one hand, then they are allowed to play. But just this is not enough. The main quality for participation and winning in Kokpa is fearlessness. When you are on a horse, you don't think about anything. You leave everything behind. Anything doesn't matter. And you don't think about anything. The game is not for everyone. Not everyone can play Kokpa. There is also a weight limit of only 60 to 70 kilograms. Locals say that when instead of canvas gates they used to have steel boilers, Kokpa players would jump into the boiler with a goat's carcass. There is no way to avoid injuries in those cases, but that did not stop the players. Kokpa players cannot allow themselves to get scared or spooked because horses are very sensitive to human fear. If a player feels fear, this will affect his horse, so the horse may start stumping or making mistakes. Our ancestors considered Kokpa as a kind of initiation rite for adults and boys. Bakit Kaibekov in his book Nomadic World describes Kokpa as a battle of a soul which is tested by dark forces like fear, negative thoughts. According to the author, Kokpa is not just a sports game. It is an attempt to be with the gods. Kokpa players resemble Tengri warriors. If the players are lucky, then the team wins. If they don't win, then at least they overcome their fears and indecisiveness. There are several theories related to the origin of the Kokpa. Here is the most common one. What do the historians say about the origin of Kokpa? Etymologically, it comes from the word Kokbori. Bori means a wolf. In the past, wolves attacked the Kazakh settlements, killed the sheep and horses. So people hunted the wolves and dragged their carcasses. This is where the game originated from. According to another version, the choice of goat is not accidental. Goats were often offered as sacrifice to gods. The Turks believed in Koktengri. In the mythology of the Turkic-speaking peoples, the goat acts as a representative of the lower world. That is why there is an expression as a scapegoat. The goat was supposed to collect all the human sins and sacrificed for gods. There are several types of kokpa. Of course, the most well-known is the sporting one. There are eight players on the field, four in each team. 
In total, there must be 12 players in each team because they take turns playing every 15 minutes. The game is very intense and energy consuming. The modern type of Kok Par is more like sport. Previously, it used to be training in strategic planning for combating an enemy. The role of each participant was specific. These roles were clearly distributed. Some players ran short distances, others had to pick up the goat carcass and pass to other participants, who had to not let go of it. People play Kokpa not only at competitions. It could happen spontaneously somewhere in a pasture or a village among friends. The duration of the game is not limited. The game continues until the goat carcass is torn apart and there is nothing to hold on to. Everything depends on the endurance of the players and horses. We are on an improvised racetrack in Berike village, Karasai district, Almaty region. In here they play a completely different kokpa. It is not a team game, everyone is playing for themselves. The weight of the goat carcass can reach 60 kilograms here. For comparison, in this sporting game the average weight of the carcass is 35 kilograms. Despite the seeming ease with which the players engage in the game, Kokpar is one of the most challenging traditional games in the Kazakh culture. By the way, one of my female friends, do not be surprised, women can also play Kokpa and trains with jars filled with water, in order to master her grip and be able to lift the carcass off the ground. Team captain Timur has an original simulator to train for Kokpa. And now he will show us how it works. I am speechless. You saw everything with your own eyes. Timur, how often do you train like this? We train every day. It takes about one hour. One training session lasts until we get tired and get to the point of a muscle collapse. We train our muscles that way. Our strength and agility comes from this. This is how we train every day. I admire Timur. He's not taller than me, but he's so much stronger than me. I even have goosebumps when I look at him. Could you repeat it? I will try. I am speechless. Timur, may I shake your strong and powerful hand? I'm impressed. Kokpar is a special game. It is nonsense to let physically unprepared person to take the sport. That's why athletic preparation is compulsory. You need strong hands to play Kokpa. Try lifting 60 kilograms with just one hand. We have 20 people in our team and we lift weights three times per week in the gym. What is an average age? The ages vary between 14 and 40. Most of the local Kongpa players are not professional athletes, but the game is in their blood. Their grandfathers, fathers played this game and now they play it. The maximum weight of a goat carcass is 60 kilograms, and this weight should be lifted off the ground from the height of a horseback. As a beginner, I decided to simplify my task and I will try to lift this backpack off the ground. The first attempt wasn't successful. The second attempt. Oh. 
Of course, it is only 5 kilograms and it cannot be compared with 60 kilograms. The choice of a horse matters a lot in Kokpa. A horse must be not only strong but clever. The connoisseurs say that a good horse does not allow his opponent's horse to get closer to the goat carcass and acts as a strong team member during the game. I'm a good horse rider but still I can't convince myself to take part in the game. I'm not a coward, it's just a matter of a common sense. That's why I will just observe from here. There are no strict judges, but there are unwritten rules, which are followed by all the players. The players cannot tie the goat's carcass to the saddle or put it under themselves. They are not allowed to attack their opponent while he is lifting the goat's carcass from the ground. Furthermore, it is forbidden to hide both legs of the goat carcass under the player's hips. One leg should remain free so the rivals can have a chance to snatch the trophy. Pay attention to how everything is happening. The player holds the goat's carcass at his thigh and presses it against the horse. And with the other hand, he is trying not to let his opponent from snatching this carcass. It takes incredible strength to remain on a saddle and try to keep the goat's carcass while running on a horse at a high speed. So the players need to be excellent horse riders, first and foremost. Attention, ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. I see that it's Timur. Here he is. Timur, let me shake your hand. What will you do with your trophy? We will grill it in the evening and eat it. That's the right decision. Will you eat it with the whole team? Yes. Congratulations. That's awesome. I watched the whole game and my admiration knows no borders. The horse is tired. It needs to rest. After the game, our ancestors cooked the goat and distributed the food among childless families with the wish of a happy family. They believe that the goat meat after the Kokpa game had a healing effect for women who suffer from infertility. Yeah, Kokpa was forbidden during the Soviet times. People believed it was a dangerous and traumatic game. There were such conversations, but there are more dangerous games than Kokpa. For example, car racing. Motorcycle racing or canoe slalom. But Kokpar is a traditional game. It is all planned and organized. The rider and horse are always together. They always help each other. No wonder people say a horse gives its rider wings. But we have to admit, Kokpar is quite traumatic. In order to decrease the number of injuries, players use special equipment. Mukhidin, we saw how you fell from the horse. We were worried about you, but you are safe and sound. That's probably because of your gear, your knee protection pads, special boots and a hat. Tell us about them. Let's start with the boots. Boots keep my feet safe so they don't break and are fixed in the stirrups. They also protect from minor injuries during clashes with opponents. Heels are an important attribute of the Kokpa. A high heel helps remain on a horse better without the risk of the player's feet slipping out of the stirrups which often happens to the players who do not have special boots. Protecting pads can save knees from injuries. They help during the game. This hat is called Borik. We make a special order to get them. It is like a helmet. Protects our heads when we fall. Kokpa players get hit on their legs mostly. Horses get hit as well. That's why they also have protection. 
This saddle has a unique shape. It is a handmade saddle. It is called Koranier. We ordered it from Shimkent. They are specially made for Kogpa. These stirrups are also a special order. According to the famous Kazakh ethnographer Akhmet Toktabai, the nomads had used stirrups starting from the 2nd century BC. And this invention was revolutionary in horse riding. Two girths are used in Kogpa. Two girths? What is their role? Usually only one girth is used, right? Yes, usually one, but in Kokpa we use two because the goat's carcass is heavy, varying between 50 to 70 kilograms. When you lift it, two girths are needed to keep the saddle stable. This is a beautiful saddle. It is so ergonomic. A saddle for Kokpar is made taking into account the features of the player's body. It must be sufficiently deep and comfortable. If you play Kokpar on an ordinary saddle, it can easily slip and the rider can easily lose balance and fall off the horse. The UNESCO has rejected Kazakhstan's application to include Kokpar in the list of intangible cultural heritage, arguing that the game is charged with a cruel treatment of animals. The same reason the Spanish were rejected with their replication of the bullfight. There is a requirement in the UNESCO convention that game should not offend the feeling of people with other ideas about humanism. Now more and more players are substituting the goat carcass for a dummy during competitions. At the World Kokpa Championship in 2017, which was held in Kazakh capital of Astana, the players used a dummy made of rubber. Teams from 12 countries took part in the competitions. On this improvised racetrack, our players are still continuing to play in the old-fashioned way. They explain this by the fact that it's easier to play with a natural carcass. The fake one slips out of their hands, making it hard to lift it off the ground and keep it. And also, the animal goat carcass is at least eight times cheaper than the rubber dummy. Despite the severity of the game, it unites all players. This game is very popular among the nations who have a common nomadic past. Not only people from Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkey, Mongolia, Azerbaijan and Russia play Kokpa, but also people from Hungary, China, Afghanistan and Argentina. Ethnic festivals are a visible confirmation of the vast geography of the nomadic world. In Europe, only Magyars have yurts. Megyars make kumas. They have similar national games. For example, you have Kokpa and we have Kobere. Kobere is a team game. It looks like Kaza Kobere, the Central Asian Buskashi. In Afghanistan and Tajikistan, Kokpa has a different name, Buskashi. It is called Ulak Tatish in Kyrgyzstan. The rules slightly vary depending on the country, but there is something that unites all the players regardless of their nationality and origin. The most important thing is antiquity and now is that people are united by a common spirit of the game. For example, we don't understand the Hungarian language and Andras knows Russian a little bit. But we freely communicate with each other, we understand each other. The main thing is a desire to understand your historical roots, not to point out the differences, but highlight the commonalities. The Kazakhs have a say. The steed keeps the horse safe, the horse keeps the rider safe, the rider keeps the people safe. Looking at our fearless riders on the playfield, I feel a sense of pride for my ancestors who created such a tough, strong-willed and truly manly game. The people who play Kokpa are unbeatable. Kokpa is a manifestation of courage and spirit of a nomad, a manifestation of the spirit of a winner. See you soon.